Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager say This is episode number 102. And today we're returning with two big games with Dortmund both away from home. I just faced Porto and Dragao where we lost last season and Bayern away at the Allianz where we lose every season. <laughs> Now, normally I'd say before we get to the games, I'll show you what's been going on off camera. Of course, you saw the last three games, the goal is at home to into the walloping away at the Rebel Arena against top of the table RB Leipzig 3 0 with a response to 4 1 win against Eintracht Frankfurt. So, yeah, today returning with Porto away and Bayern at home, uh, sorry, Bayern away, sorry, and uh, a refresher of the tables for you once again. In the Champions League right now, two wins and two draws in our first four sees us outside of the top eight, which of course gives you a buy into the quarterfinals. I mentioned before, we got four really tough games to come in the Champions League. Manchester United, Barcelona, Newcastle and Porto as well. So to me, I'm just thinking about staying here now. Just staying here. And I don't see Stad Rene, so at least we can't face them once again if we do go into the playoff round. That's the Bundesliga, of course, despite the loss to RB Leipzig. They lost their following game away at Hertha Berlin. Jenkins, can you believe it? Paul Jenkins scored that second in the 2-0 loss there. So it's very tight in the Bundesliga right now. Bayern back in the race. We knew that was going to happen after stumbling out the blocks. Three points behind Leipzig. We're one point behind and could potentially go top if we win at the Allianz. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, <laughs> RB Leipzig obviously failed to match our results. A big gain there at home to Leverkusen, who they themselves will want to get in a title race themselves. Anyway, uh, so heading into the game, if you've read the title, I bet you're waiting for this. Yes, I've made a tactical change. It's not going to work well. It, it very rarely does. It normally ends in tears. But because we struggle away consistently... And we know that away days are really hard to win in FM23. I've decided to make a new tactical system. And I did say this year, I'll probably need to make one as we've been relying on the 4-2-3-1 Gegenpress since we joined Dortmund. Now, I've mentioned before, this system, this kind of five at the back system just seems to be so hard to win against in this year's FM. So if you can't beat them, join them. And I've made one myself. So heading into the game, as you'll see, we're going to go 5-3-2 with a ball-playing defender, a no-nonsense centre-half, and a centre-back as well. I don't know why, but I'm very reluctant to always go to stopper or cover on my centre-halves. I just like them all to be natural centre-halves to try and stay in line. Um, and then you know, the wing-backs are going to be on support duty as well. Our midfield trio consists of a ball-winning midfielder, a box-to-box -box midfielder, and an advanced playmaker. Now, I'm not against changing these roles around, depending on whether I need to or not. I'm not sure if a ball midfielder and a box-to-box that's the best way to go but for now we'll start with it and see what happens and up top we've got one deep line for linking the midfield into play with no attacking midfielder that'll be company tonight and we Coco is listed now not as an advanced forward but a complete forward so yeah we'll go with that system to begin with the player roles and in terms of the tactics and mentality as we'll use this system in away days where we expect to lose we'll be on defence because I mentioned before away days normally if I stay on positive or attacking I get my, my fingers stung so we're going to go more defensive in possession slightly lower tempo but more direct got to get the ball forward with no attack mid today get it straight to the strikes and hopefully company can hold the ball up playing at a lower tempo but still passing out of defense with a work the ball into, uh, into box instruction in transitioning not counter pressing because again we're going with a more defensive shape uh, so just trying to get players behind the ball if possible but do counter when you get the ball back um, and as for out of possession, again, as you'll see, we're not going to trigger the press as much as we ordinarily would. We will prevent the short GK distribution, which I always have ticked on. And also, as well, stay on feet as well. No silly cards. And we'll standard our defensive line, not play a high line like I norm normally do, as I've been stung quite a few times this season and often in away days. So a standard defensive line, which should help us not get caught out from balls into the back Balls behind the back, sorry, I should say. So there you go. So this will be our team. Uh, on injury report, Vimmer's still carrying a knock from the sports hernia, but two starters will get rest tonight. That's the Dragon and Land Shooter as well. Both have played the majority of my games this season. They need a night off. And with Porto away, where we lost last season, I expect to lose again. So just going to give them a night off for this game here with Bayern Munich away at the Allianz on the weekend in mind. So this will be our team. Our first game with a tactical shape. We'll see if it works or not. Dennis between the sticks. And the back five now is Crozer, Flavio, Bennett, Creswell and Fresneda, not too sure about those two youngsters alongside the captain. Hopefully Charlie can shepherd them in this game here. Midfield trio, Oscan, Reyna and Dos Santos. Now I've got Dos Santos box to box because as I mentioned before, this guy's got tremendous stamina. Very good. He's very quick as well, so we can get back quickly too. And mentally as well, okay, a lack of positioning and tackling and marking. It's not great, but 
We've got great finishing, great dribbling. He can shuttle the ball forward for sure, and he works really hard out of possession as well. That's why for his box-to-box, -box, I think that position there and that role for him will be okay. He won't be his best in his more creative role, but he can still help out on defense and come forward and influence the game on the offensive end. Up top again, it's company. He struggled all season long, so a new role for him tonight, and maybe, just maybe, it'll do him some good. I guess we'll have to wait and see again. The teamwork is poor, the vision is poor, but... Put it this way, he's really struggles inside forward as someone I've wanted to attack in this system. So perhaps a new role for him will breathe some fresh life into his poor season. And he's up top alongside you, Sufa. On the bench, you've got Alfonso Steiger Subatic. The, uh, the son of uh, Neven, he makes the bench tonight due to the rest of the Dragon. Uh, Stridi, Wakjen, Kuring, Vima, Mane, Romero, Dayo, Mohamed and Norton as well. First to two, it's Porto away. Away days are our Achilles heel with a new tactical shape, maybe. We'll nick a win here away at the Dragal. Come on, Borussia Dortmund. I just feel like, for me, this year, the five-at-the-back system is the way to go. And due to how poor we play away from home, we might as well try something different. Do you know what I mean? We might as well, because we'll probably lose anyway. So just, just give something else a go. Like, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. So might as well try something new and just maybe we'll get a little bit of luck playing this way. Anyway, first half is going to fall to Porto, and they could have converted there. Thiago Thomas straight at Dennis, but again, that's that's the one thing the system will do for us. We'll be crowding out with three centre halves and those wing backs can also come in and help out our CBs as well, if need be. That's the one thing that we should notice more with this system. Company to Mukoko must finish and doesn't hits the post, and it's claimed. He rarely performs in the biggest of games. He's missed an absolute sitter there. Great ball by Anthony, but couldn't be converted by his strike partner. Still 0-0 and a golden chance spurned. As this game has started off quite fast with Porto looking for that opener after going close early. There's definitely goals tonight, no doubt about that. As they attack down the left route, Aaron Hickey. Out comes Fresneda. Can't deny the pass inside though. And there is the opener. Okay, do you know what? It's, it's 11 minutes into a game with a totally new tactic. No need to get too concerned. See, that that right there shouldn't be happening. That should not be happening. Why is Charlie going so far out of position to shut his man down? We're not triggering press for every single opposite attack. And Charlie is a centred back on uh, on the defend duty. That, that shouldn't be happening. He's not got a stopper on there. Is centre back defender that shouldn't be happening. I do, I do feel as well. I, again, I, I want to say this: is it just me, or do players tend to ignore your instructions more in away days as well? I've noticed that too. I've noticed that too. They often hoof the ball long when you've got play out of defence and shorter passing instructions on as well. Players do tend to ignore instructions when you're away from home more often too. I don't know whether it's me or it's just this year's FM, but to be fair, to my credit, I have noticed there's a lot of talk about this on the socials. Away days are much harder to win and players do ignore instructions on the road as well. That shouldn't have happened there. So I'll say you've been unlucky so far, but second half to go, we have one golden chance and what a shocker in a tough game, Mukoko spurned it. Second half to begin, we haven't been breached out often though, to be fair. We're doing okay out there. My biggest issue, again, is that as Bennett is tripped there, I think we just won ourselves a penalty. English referee favouring an English manager and an English centre after it was taken down. Oh, I'm sure there'll be some controversy surrounding that tomorrow morning in the Portuguese paper. Yeah, Chris Bennett wins it and a penalty for Borussia Dortmund. Now, it's going to be Ozcan will take it. And thank fuck for that because Mukoko's missed two in a row and Romero's not starting tonight. It's missed one too. Ozcan, I trust him and he does convert as well. Good old reliable Salah Ozcan. 50 year. He doesn't miss penalties. Mukoko does. Salah doesn't. Right, there we go. Back on level terms. And now let's try and build on this. Well done, Borussia Dortmund. 0-0. And again, we've had a very few amount of chances out there. But, I mean, you can't get much more clear-cut than a penalty and a 1-1 -on -one chance to hit the post as well. So, yep, it's tied at 1-1. One -one, I'll take this. I will definitely take this. Positives from this system. If not a flawless performance away, we've done what we wanted. We restricted Porto to mainly long-range shots. And we're doing okay out there. We've got nine minutes to go. We could still win this too. Crows are to company. And Anthony, fuck me, wins it back to be fair. He's lost it this season. He's absolutely fallen off it. I'm definitely thinking of 18 months on this contract. We might send him. Great ball. Mukoko must finish. Yes, you super. Chips it in. 
and it's 2-1 Dortmund, come on! Luis Flavio back at the Dragao, he was out there on loan last season, plays a brilliant ball forward, nasty advantage of a good BPD in your team that can spot those runs. And he's done just that. You sue for this time, gets it right the second time of asking. Dortmund lead 2-1. Don't need a second replay, FM. Can we hold on to this? Oh, highlight, Porto. Three and a half minutes to go. Uh, as Fresneda cuts out that pass to Aaron Hickey. And now, if we get the ball forward here, we've got a great chance. We've got the counter instruction on. And we've played the counter. Company, Mukoko, to wrap it up. He says, Gaffer, shut your mouth. Shush in the lips, not just to the crowd, but to me on the sidelines as well. You sue for bags, a late brace, storm and winner. Docky Landers, tactical genius. Not too sure about that, but you know what? We'll take it through on the final score. Came from behind to win it. And again, we, we did concede early and there were a couple of early chances. But other than that, once we tightened up, we sort of grew into the game a little bit. And then in the second half, Oscar converting the pen. And by that point, the complexion kind of changed. And I often say this, like, you can't read too much into the stats sometimes. You might look at those stats and think, okay, it was kind of balanced possession out there, Porto had more shots. But yes, really, if you look at the chances and the quality of chances, Mukoko had two one-on-ones. He, sorry, he had three one-on-ones. He took two of them and missed one. And we scored from the spot as well. So the quality of chance was much, much higher. That was a solid, solid second half performance there. Really, even in the first half, we didn't do too badly despite falling behind early. Excellent win. I think perhaps if I was going to make another tweak, possibly I would consider playing even more narrower to make sure those wing-backs come in even more central. Um... I wouldn't necessarily say it's necessary, though. Um, I, don't, I don't really see too much of an issue with his tactical shape, personally. 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 So, yeah, so long as my CBs hold their line and don't do what Charlie did, that was the, the error for the goal, really, was Charlie just saying, fuck playing centre-half and staying in my back three. I'm going to pop over here. So long as they do that... I think we're okay. I don't see too many holes in this system. But of course, it's one thing being able to win at Dragao. It's another trying to win at the Allianz where we've only won once. But of course, that was in a pretty meaningless, glorified friendly of a Super Cup. Leipzig did win this afternoon. 1-0 against Bayer Leverkusen. So they've now gone four clear again. And will need to win to stay close to them and cut it to one. If Bayern win, they'll leapfrog us and we'll drop to third place as well. So... Leverkusen, listen, class team, don't get me wrong. Luis Enrique now in charge. They're absolutely class team. But to me, I don't think they're going to be in a tight race here. I think it's the top three right now. Us, Bayer, and of course the leaders. Uh, us, Bayern, sorry. And of course the leaders, Leipzig too. So heading into the game, again, going to change my system and shape just very, very, bre uh, very, very slightly. Because, I mean, this is the time to experiment, right? In the games you expect to lose. Might as well try different systems, different shapes, and see what happens. We'll stick with the 5-3-2 and remain with the same instructions. I was considering playing an even lower, uh, less often trigger press. So I'll, I'll stay on it for now. I'll stay on standard. But this will be our team. So once again, Dennis is in goal. But now, as you'll see, I've, I've brought back two of my CMs to DM as well to really cover this third of the pitch here. So it will be a back three of the Dragon, Bennett and Creswell. Streeting for his nade once again to wing backs. But now they've got support in the DM position. The DM line. You've got Crozier as an anchor man. Again with the, the range of passing this guy's got. He's, he's set up to play as an anchor man really, really well. The strength, the positioning, the anticipation. This is, I, I think to me, even though he normally plays as a DLP. I think maybe in away days. I mean that's the best thing with, with Crozier maybe. Playing as DLP in the games we expect to win. To let him be more expansive. Maybe the anchor, maybe the, uh, the away days we expect to lose playing as an anchor man and utilize the good defensive stats he's got maybe that's it i don't know but even so he's the anchor man today alongside mane and dos santos now changed to an advanced playmaker in fact what happens a roaming playmaker really to come forward even more so and link those top two and the top two well this is interesting mukoka does of course start as a complete forward but it's land shooter the 16 year old and i mentioned before if you look at his stats here very aggressive great work rate Excellent determination. He's slightly brave as well. And the more further forward he plays, the more he'll get the chance to utilise the finishing and the first touch and the technique as well. So pressing forward, Angelo Landshuter, good passing, teamwork not great, but decent vision as well. I'm going to play him as far forward as possible for the most part, and he'll support Mukoko up top and fashion in our supporting cast as well, playing a very pressing, aggressive game tonight. On the bench, you've got Alfonso, Flavio, Watgen, Ozcan, Vimmer, Reina, Romero, Company, and Norton as well. Second and final game, let's keep on experimenting. It's Bayern Munich away at the Allianz. 
Come on, Dortmund. Anything goes tonight. Let's just find out. The advantage to play in land shooter in a range of different positions as Araujo's been left out. He must be injured, surely. That's interesting. Araujo's been, I think, the top scorer this year. I just wanted, sorry, I just wanted to check this real quick. Is he injured? He must be injured, surely. Um, no, he's not. He's just been totally left out. All right. Oh, mate, this is this is unbelievable. It's like Ben Simmons when he ducked the nets. Do you know what I mean? He's he's fine. He's totally fine. But he's uh, he's going to cite mental health reasons, perhaps, for his DNP tonight. Enrique, out of the match day squad fully. That's very interesting indeed. But uh, yeah, the interesting the, the advantage of Angelo playing in uh, in different roles so early on in his career is it, it's not really harm him too much. He's 16. He's got so long to learn different roles. Maybe this is his best role, maybe it's not. But the only way we'll find out is by playing him there. So first time, like falling early, to be fair, to the uh, holders and the favourite, Spyam. As Abriel comes inside, back to Sam Binch, that young English wonder kid. Kimmich for a mile out here. He's shut down. We're very, very narrow early on in this game with Bayern looking for an opening. And they've got one. And it's a great save by Dennis Seaman. But the flag was indeed up. Matthias Tell straight offside. Excellent stop by our number one. We're waiting for him to have a world-class performance. Since we brought him in from Lazio, I'll be honest here, he's been poor. He's not been great. We need him to have like one game where he shows and justifies his price tag, his salary, and a reputation as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. That's a tremendous stop there, even though it wouldn't have counted. But again, so far, so good. 0-0, okay, no chances created, losing a possession battle, but Bayern haven't really had one yet. So at the moment, we're doing okay. And these extra DMs are helping out our back five as well. 35 minutes in, though, and Bayern, 20 time in a row champions, aiming to get in front. Kimmich loses out and it's cleared, but... They're yeah, looking for that goal, looking for that opening, looking for that breakthrough. Alfonso in, crosses, it's hung up high in the air. Stefano clears, but this is going to be a training exercise for the most part here as we aim to hang on. Cross the middle, and the header in the far post. Fresneda beaten in the air, and it's 1-0. It shouldn't have happened, man. He's 6-1. I can't stand it when a player's over 6 foot and loses an aerial duel. I don't mind if he's coming up against Peter Crouch, but that Greek winger, I know him. He's only 6 foot, so Fresneda is actually only an inch, to be fair. But as girls on Tinder will tell you, every inch counts. In terms of height is one, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it tells through and it's going to be two there. Kept on side. Oh, fuck's sake. Chris Bennett kept him on side. Uh, definitely on 2-0 Bayern. And in three minutes, we've absolutely... We were defending fine. We were defending utterly fine in the first half an hour. But now we've been breached twice. And honestly, man, like I don't... So many balls over the top catch us out. Even when we're not playing an overly high line. It's so frustrating. Back three, totally disjointed there. Not a single line between them. And Bayern go two goals up in three. That's, that's so frustrating. You know, you're defending totally well. Everything's fine. And you just capitulate in a matter of moments. It's it's so frustrating. And again, like I said, these are the games to experiment in. We're, we're going to lose anyway. It's fucking Bayern Munich, mate. They're 20 time in a row champions. And yes, they stumbled out of the blocks. But put it this way, even when Leipzig were nine wins in a row, they were still favourites to win the title. It's Bayern Munich away. We're going to lose. You know, we're going to lose anyway. So you might as well just experiment and see how things go. So in which case, let's, let's get us further up the pitch a little bit instead now. Let's play a higher defensive line. Let's trigger our press a little bit more now. We'll stay on the feet. We will step up more as well. And I think we'll also not be as direct in our passing. And let's also push our push our DMs up now as well. And go back to the 5-3-2 we were playing in the uh, in the previous game. Let's have Dos Santos as an advanced playmaker. Let's change this role to box to box. And uh, can I keep Cruiser as a DLP? Even though he's gonna be playing in a wrong position, the role's gonna be totally fine. In fact, should I take off Mane and have Dos Santos as a box to box? Let's bring on Geo as our advance for Mane. And I think that'll do it just for now. In fact, Dragon's not played especially well, and I want him fit for the game in midweek. So we've got, uh, we got um, Augsburg in midweek. So what I'll do is actually is I'll uh, I'll keep Mane on, but I'll change him to a, a ball playing defender. Because he's got some decent passing, to be fair, in vision as well. So no reason he can't do that role. Okay, well, that's, that's frustrating. We're going to change things around a little bit, though. And, um, yeah, we'll see what the second half brings us. We, we might as well experiment. We're going to lose the game anyway, so we might as well just experiment. Still, now we've got those two DMs up as CMs. It is going to mean that line is going to be harder for us to be more effective in as uh, Dennis holds on to that very poor attempt there. I'm a little bit concerned how he hasn't fashioned a single shot in the game. I guess we've got the workable instruction on as well, so maybe we should take that off too, but... 
Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just away days, you know what I mean? Like, if I've gone three and off as I'm taking that instruct, I, I think it is just away days at the end of the day. Like, they're just, they're just so OP. Whether you change your tactics, whether you go more defensive, or whether you stay true to your normal system, I don't think it really matters. I mean, away days, in this, I've, ne- I've never played an FM like this, where away days are just so... So OP. I've never played an FM like this one. Well, that was about as dominant as a victory as Bayern will ever have, but unsurprisingly, the opponent is Borussia Dortmund. So that means they'll leapfrog us and go into second, and our winless run against Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga continues. Disappointing, but uh, you know we're going to lose the game anyway. It's fucking Bayern away, man. 20 championships in a row. We're going to lose anyway. Might as well try something different. So it worked against Porto. It did not work tonight, but uh, not really too surprised about that. Oh, well. What, 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 worth trying something different. Worth trying something different. You know what, fuck it. I'm playing the Augsburg. I'm not ending on that. You know, when I said Araujo was running scared, hence why he didn't play that game. No, 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 he wasn't running scared, he was running laughing. He was running upstairs to watch the game in the VIP box to get a better view of that dominant victory for his new team against his old team. He wanted to watch that in comfort as opposed to be out there on the pitch instead. He knew his team was to get the job done, they definitely did. Oh, I miss him. I do miss him. He might have, he might have left in uh, maybe not controversial circumstances, but not, there's not much not about controversial leaving your 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 team to your main rivals who you're battling for the title with in January and then going on to win the title there. But uh, at least if nothing else we are gonna get another ten to quarter million when that uh where is it? When that uh, when those R eight league goals get hit, most likely between now and the end of the season. But uh, by the way, Lanchu has just turned professional, finally been waiting for this. Now he's turned seventeen, he's just signed that pro deal up to eight grand a week. It's a lot more than 55 quid he was getting paid, but uh, even so, Angelo, what a baller. M- maybe pressing forward isn't his best role after all, but uh, I, I I just need to make sure he gets further forward, man. He's just he, he's just wasted deeper. Right, third and final game. Let's just make sure we end on a high, yeah? Augsburg at home should be a banker, though, to be fair, they did end Leipzig's winning run. Of course, that was away from home, but this should be a banker. Bayern are also playing tonight. They're away at Olympia Stadion. Tough game for there, to be fair. And Leipzig are in Nuremberg away tonight as well. So we need to win to keep pace with the teams that are now top two. So heading into the game, this will be our team. We'll go back to our 4-2-3-1 Gigan press because we're the favourites and we are at home as well. And this will be our team. Free rest tonight. Fresnela, Crows and land shooter all desperately need a one as is Dos Santos but I, I can't afford to rest him I really can't yeah I don't mind resting the kid I don't mind resting Crozer but th- this guy can't be rested man he's having an absolutely amazing season he needs to start I'd say he and Mukoko will be my top two players this season so Dennis is in goal in about 40s Luis Flavio at left back with a dragon Creswell and Mane at full back at full back so now it's quite a makeshift back four here Stridi now comes in to play DLP with Oscan. in fact you know what no, I'm going to make a last-minute change here, actually. I'm going to make a last-minute change. Just swap those two rolls around. And, yeah, because Oscan can't pass. So, Stridi at right back instead. Sorry, let me change that around. Stridi at right back instead. And Oscan and Mane at DM. Gio, uh, Dos Santos on the left. Romero on the right. And Reina does support me. Kai Cock top. Expect a couple of goals tonight for Yusufa. Because Lord knows he can't do it against any of the big boys. Anyway, on the bench, you've got Alfonso, Bennett, Watjen, Curing, Vimmer, Dario, Mohamed Company, and Norton as well. Third and definitely final game. Augsburg should be a banker. And it needs to be to have any chance of staying in the title race. Come on, Borussia Dortmund. Yeah, Stridi moves from side to side like he's Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj. I mean, if anyone gets a reference, by the way, Slay. Um, have I ever said Slay on camera before? I don't think so. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he he's a, he's obviously like you know just as good at right back as he's at left back. But obviously, you know, I, I have this thing about you know fullbacks playing on the other side to their preferred feet. I just don't really like it. But you know, like I said, you know, he spent all of last season at right back and he spent all of the first half of the uh the year in season one at right back when he first came in as well so early goal and what a shocker it's my top two players of the year that have linked up fernando with another assist is ninth in the bundesliga going for that season record and who's got the goal it's the guy that can't score in munich it's the guy that can't score in leipzig but ask him to get me two goals at home to Augsburg. No problem. There's his first. Yusufa, the stat padder, with another. 33 minutes in. Looking for his second goal to try and take the reins of this game. Mr. Dragon, our vice captain, receives it from the skipper. Who gets it back from Ozcan, the former vice captain. And forward we go. Gio, on the turn, finds Luca Romero. And he's got Stridi down his right-hand side. Stefano, back at right-back tonight. 
taken down. It was a very good tackle, or at least I thought it was, but instead the referee's given a foul. But was he in or out? Now, for sure, he was outside, but I'm surprised it was even a free kick. To me, it looked like he was uh, tackled very comfortably, but instead it's a, a free kick given. And it's a red card as well. Two-footed lunge. Well, he, he won all of the ball, but must have taken the man down first. So it may not be a penalty, it is a free kick. And Augsburg going on a 10, and we should be able to comfortably see this game from here. What a ball, Stefano. Rayner inside the area, should have pulled the trigger first time. What a lovely ball to find the American. So now we've got that man advantage, just a drag and nods it back to Seaman. What I think I'll do very briefly is just say to the boys, look, just stay on your feet now. You've got the man advantage, no need to get a silly red card here as we're in control. And I think as well, we trapped them inside as well, so we've got more chance for trapping now with, uh, with them being a man light. And I think that'll do it just for now. So, yeah, approaching the break here. But um, we should be able to get the ball back more frequently. We were trapping inside or out as they're away from home and our demand is advantage. Uh, we should be able to get the ball back more and get more chance on the offensive end. Stefano finds Luca and Romero coming into the area with space to whip one into the middle. He does. There's Ozcan arriving. Big block and still 1-0. Mane to Creswell, and now Oscan, the cool old head of Salah Oscan, out wide to Luis Flavio, finding the young left back, crosses Dos Santos, makes it to, and Dortmund double their lead right for the right. The question was, was Flavio offside when that ball was played, and I thought he was, it's gone to VAR, but Dos Santos can't have been offside, because the ball was played behind him, so if Flavio was on, and that goal would definitely say, what? How, how, can, how can Dos Santos have been offside there? The ball was played backwards, wasn't it? Flavio plays it in, Oh, was, oh, no, 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 sorry, I thought there was a man behind him that taps in. Okay, Dos Santos was the man in front of him. Sorry, I, I got the two yellow shirts confused there. Yeah, it was the right call in the end. I was looking at the wrong yellow dot. Once again, the perils of 2D on full display. Even so, 1-0 down. We, we're absolutely controlling this game. Like, it should get a second goal by at some point, and that will see these points wrapped up and put in the bag. And I want to take off my two main guys as well, who are getting tired out there in Fernando and Yusufa, but there's absolutely no chance I'm taking them off. Whilst we still only lead by one, go tune it up and that will definitely do it. We won't throw it away with a man advantage here at home with a two-goal lead. But when it's 1-0, you just never know. Do you know what I mean? Late corner, let's see, let's, late set piece, lucky deflection. You just never know. So we want to make sure we hold on to these three points here. And a second goal will definitely confirm that as we look for that second. Captain Creswell to Filippo. Gives him a 1-2. And forward we go with the skipper, Mane, Reina inside the centre circle, chips it long, Mukoko must finish, Yusufa comfortably slots it home, the stat padder, back at it again, 2-0 Dortmund, that'll do it now. Guy drives me nuts, honestly, like, I'm not expecting to score a hat-trick away at the Allianz, but do you know what I mean? Like, he, he scored that winning goal in the Super Cup, and he was like, well, my work is done, like, I'm out of here. I'm like, bro, no, it's your first competitive game back at Dortmund, it's the fucking Super Cup, I don't give a shit, do it in the league. I don't think he scored against Bayern in the league yet. It has he? Because last season it wasn't it wasn't Mukoko that got the goals. It was Fernando and uh, and someone else, but I can't remember who it was. But even so, it's now three here. Oscan's got an assist, and Luca has got another one as well. So yep, three 0 Dortmund, and that will do it now. I've taken off my starters, so yeah, that game coming on the weekend. They should be fit enough for that one. This is a good statement here tonight. We might not be able to win at the Red Bull Arena. We might not be able to win at the Allianz, but we can at least keep the pressure on by beating the rest. I said it again. I'll, I'll say it, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If you can't beat the best. You gotta make sure you beat the rest, and for the most part, we do just that. Three 0 and that's the points now in the bag. Romero slides it over the top. Jordan Norton hasn't scored in God knows how long. Oh, and the goalless run continues for the young Australian. He really only plays off the bench, to be fair. But still, I thought he was gonna break his goal route. Sadly, the woodwork denies him. Still 22 minutes to do it though. Rainer corner whipped in and headed away as we look for a fourth goal late on. Gio has another chance to whip one in here. And instead goes to the edge where Kiel Watjen is waiting. There's Chris Bennett. Shoo! Is the shout from the crowd. And in the end, it's not the best of efforts from the young centre-half. And there's a reason why he's a no-nonsense centre-half. And certainly not a libero. Even so, still leading by three. Four minutes to go. And as things stand, these points in the bag. Question is, is the clean sheet? And can we get another goal to keep that good goal difference record up this season? Company needs a goal. And he's got one as well. Only his sixth of the year, but Lord knows he needed that. He struggled mightily this year, but he'll take a late goal. Augsburg looking for a consolation to take home with them, and they may well get it. I've taken off all my starters now, and obviously, oh, Sivkovic. 
oh, that's not the Zivkovic, a young, a young region Zivkovic drills one in and the clean sheet for Dennis goes. In a weird way, I'm kind of pleased about it though, because he doesn't, he doesn't like justify one for this sort of performance. He's just been shit. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be totally honest. Like In the games he's kept a clean sheet, it's not like he's pulled off a weldy and made like three or four class A's. No, he's just done nothing. Like There's been no shot on target. The only shot on target found him back in the net in this game. So in a way, I don't want to pay his clean sheet bonuses. I'll pay it for the back line, but not for him. He's done nothing. So I'll say to the boys here, well done, like, good win for us. But for Dennis, no clean sheet there. But again, he doesn't really deserve one. You deserve one when you make some good saves, mate. Or you command your area. He just hasn't been it for me this season. It's so frustrating for as well class as he is. He just hasn't done it. So we'll process through then and see the evening kickoff results. And Leipzig did win away. But Hertha Berlin did win themselves though. So we're back into second. Jenkins again. <laughs> Go on, mate. Gives Hertha the win. So Bayern lose, but Leipzig win, unfortunately. So that does mean Leipzig are still top and still four clear as well. So us and Bayern right now are just competing to be second place. We know that feeling all too well. Bayern don't. Welcome to our world, Bayern Munich. We're not going to be top. Leipzig are four points clear with that big win away in Nuremberg. So that will do it for today's episode, guys. Big fan, hope you enjoyed it. If you have then, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we'll return with games against... Kind of want to do that Newcastle game, but I need to gather some pace. Although, to be fair, do you know what? We've done two treble leaders in a row, and I might keep it going because I want to play at Hertha Berlin away day. They've beaten both uh, both Bayer, no, both Bayern and RB Leipzig, so I, I want to play that away day. That'll be a tough test there at Olympia Stadium. Clearly, that's a tough place to go. I want to play that one on camera, so I'll do that one, the Newcastle game, and Bayer Leverkusen at home, still trying to keep themselves in a title race themselves. Guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the next episode on the Football Show. I can't get a break, man. Seriously, there's just too many big games going, but I'll see you for another big treble header very soon.